The Seerah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Part 28 So now Abraha and his army If they had turned around at that point They would have been saved And unfortunate and wretched is that person Who doesn't take heed from Allah's signs And unfortunately Abraha and his army Were of those people Who were not taking heed from all of this Nufail uh, he understood and he slipped away. But the rest of them were adamant that they're going to still move ahead. They were still in the process of trying to get Mahmoud to move. And some were of the opinion that let's just leave Mahmoud here and let's just march on without him. And this conversation was taking place and the efforts were taking place when all of a sudden the sky turned dark and the whole atmosphere was filled with a strange sound. And the whole of the sky became filled with small birds. And later on, the people who managed to survive this azab and this punishment of Allah, they say that small birds came upon us and they flew like uh, swifts. They were very small, but they flew really, really fast. And they came in their multitudes until they filled the whole of the sky and the whole of the sky in the daytime became black. And each bird held three pebbles, one in its beak and two in its claws. And these pebbles were only the size of peas. And then as the birds came from the direction of the sea, they came over the army, then they swooped down. And as they swooped down between the ranks of the army, the, they released these stones. Now these stones were from Jahannam. Means Sijil. They were from Jahannam. They were only the size of pea, peas. But Allah Ta'ala put so much velocity in them and so much force in them that these bullets, these pebbles became more powerful than any bullet in our time. And so they fell with such velocity and such a power that they pierced the armor and the chains of mail of the soldiers they went right through their armor and then it would enter a person from his head it go through his helmet and then it go through his skull goes through his body go right through his body this is the power of these uh, peas and every stone found its mark and whoever was hit by these stones they either the stone went through them like a bullet and killed them or if it touched them, then the effect of the bullet, even by scraping a person, was that it made the flesh of the bodies decompose. And so some people died immediately, and some people, they started, they started disintegrating slowly. And their flesh started to rot, and their flesh became like molten flesh flesh started melting Allahu Akbar now we have to ask ourselves where did these birds come from only Allah knows his army and there's no limit to Allah Ta'ala's army Allahu Akbar where did these stones come from the ulama have said that these stones were from Jahannam this is why they didn't just pierce but they also had this effect of making the flesh turned molten and make it, they had like a chemical effect. Like you hear in this day and age in chemical warfare, there's a gas, there's a liquid, Allah Ta'ala protect us all. And it makes the flesh uh, disintegrate and melt off the body. So like that, more than 1400 years ago, Allah Ta'ala sent a chemical attack on uh, Abraha and his army. And the reason why the punishment was so severe is because their intention was so evil they wanted to break the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so many of the soldiers died instantly and some of them they died a slow and painful death where their body was disintegrating and their fingers were falling off their hands and their hands were falling off their arms and their body pieces were just falling off and their flesh was just melting off their bones. 
So some people suffered this terrible plight, some just uh, died immediately. And uh, the Quraysh are in the mountain and they are witnessing all of this. And because they are witnessing this, their iman is increasing now. And their respect for Abdul Muttalib and the Banu Hashim is increasing even more. Because they know that Abdul Muttalib had predicted this before. He said that you know no harm can come to the Kaaba. And they knew that Abdul Muttalib has made this dua and he has a connection with Allah. And he's not an idol worshipper. And he's on the Millat Ibrahim. He's on the religion of Ibrahim a.s. And he does not fornicate and he does not drink and... They knew all of this. So this was a sign from Allah for the Quraysh in order to increase the honor and the prestige of Banu Hashib and Abdul Muttalib because Muhammad was going to come from them.